Let's start uh, our topic. Uh, my name is Dr. Mohammad Hashim. Uh, today's topic is clinical evaluation and it's uh, of ACS and its management. Uh, learning objective for today's talk is uh, understanding anatomy, physiology, and pathology of coronary arteries. Uh, our view of uh, risk factors for ACS and rule out other causes of chest pain by using your history, examination, and uh, taking help of chest uh, ECG. Rapid diagnosis is the pearl of cardiology. Uh, if you rapidly diagnose the disease, especially ACS, uh, the outcome will be improved. There will be low mortality and morbidity. And in the end, we will discuss uh, common complications of acute MI. So before, before uh, going to our topic, uh, ACS, let's uh, have uh, go over the coronary anatomy. Uh, this is the pictorial slide which shows root of aorta, uh, in which uh, from the right coronary cusp, the right coronary artery arises, uh, while from left coronary cusp, the left main coronary artery uh, originates. This, after this origination, it uh, divided into two segments, two big branches, that is left anterior descending artery, which runs in uh, anterior groove of the heart, and the uh, circumflex artery, which runs in atrioventricular groove of the art. LAD gives various branches, that is diagonals and perforators, while uh, circumflex gives OM branches. So this, uh, these arteries supplies different segments and wall of the art. Let's see in uh, this diagram that heart has mainly four walls, that is anterior, lateral, and inferior. The anterior is further divided into septal and pure anterior. So we will take only anterior, lateral, and inferior. These different territories supplied by different arteries. The anterior wall of the heart is supplied, the anterior or anterior septal segment of the heart, wall of the heart is supplied by LAD. The inferior wall of the heart is supplied by right coronary artery, while the lateral part of the heart is supplied by circumflex or diagonal arteries, which are the branches of LAD. So whenever the any of these artery gets obstruct, changes in a specific leads in ACG comes. That is, ACG is not only diagnostic tool for your ACS, but it, it also tells you in uh, cases of acute MI that which artery is most probably occluded. Let's go over uh, the coronary blood flow, how usually uh, in all of the arteries in our body, the blood flow is laminar blood flow. Uh, that is the central jet of the blood flow have the maximum velocity while the peripheral stream of the blood get the lower uh, velocity. Whenever any obstruction does occur uh, in flow, then the, this, this uh, laminar blood flow get disturbed and there is the, the blood flow get episodes and that is called turbulent blood flow. What the turbulent blood flow causes, it distracts the endothelium and uh, accelerates the atherosclerosis, which is the cause of ACS. In this in this type, you can see that this is the uh, cut section of the coronaries or blood vessels, which uh, which is free of disease, and this is the lumen of the artery. In this, you can see that there is atherosclerosis and narrowing of the uh, coronary, and the lumen gets smaller than the normal. While uh, in this cross section, uh, you can see that there is atherosclerosis of the coronary artery 
which destructs the flow the laminar flow this uh, the, the it is not laminar flow there so the bl the blood the jet of the blood comes and hits continuously this part of the plaque and by having uh, hit by the blood flow continuously once that this plaque this uh, plaque gets disrupted and the blood exposed to the subendothelial tissue this subendothelial tissue then the platelet gets activated and thrombus been, been formed here and the artery get occluded 100% then the flow to the distal gets compromised this is also the, the endothelium, uh, the, uh, the cross section of the coronaries, which shows that it has four layers. You all know that endothelium, intima, media, and adventitia. The atherosclerosis, the pathogenesis of the atherosclerosis starts from intra embryo, uh, intra uh, fetal life, intra abdominal life. So, whenever it starts and then the accelerates and then lumen gets narrowed over the period of time but whenever after this uh, luminal narrowing once in a time that due to turbulent blood flow the plaque get rupture and the blood get exposed to subendothelial tissue and platelet gets activated vicious cycle gets starts and thrombus being formed in the coronaries and blood flow get compromise to the distal to that part of the blood and get MI or ACS. So what are the risk factors for atherosclerosis or disease of the coronaries or any of the artery of the body? It has been divided in two mainly factors that is non-modifiable factors which cannot be changed. That is your age as you get older the atherosclerosis get worse your, your gender male gender has predominant to coronary arteries and family history family whoever has family history of premature coronary artery disease get, are more prone to ischemic heart disease then these are the on left side of your screen you can see the modifiable risk factors that is hyperlipidemia smoking diabetes hypertension lack of physical activity obesity and uh, poor diet so whenever you got these risk, these uh, risk factors your atherosclerotic procedure gets in a escalatic mood and you get coronary artery disease earlier. So whoever has family history or uh, he should look after these modifiable risk factors and gets modify as much as possible. Uh, in this slide, you can see that there is atherosclerotic plaque in artery that get ruptured and after being ruptured if it completely occludes the coronary then it causes acute mi in case of complete occlusion after this it gets acute mi if it doesn't completely occlude it but compromise distal blood flow then it is either unstable angina or non st elevation mi so we got in ACS, we got three entities. One is acute occlusion or complete occlusion that leads to acute MI or partial occlusion. Uh, the blood flow is still, there are some blood flow distilled to the plaque rupture, but that is uh, compromising the distal as well. So this is unstable angina or non or uh, non ST elevation MI. So as per ACC AHA uh, recommendation or they set a definition for acute coronary syndrome, which is the term acute coronary syndrome refers to any group of clinical symptoms compatible with acute myocardial ischemia, which includes unstable angina, 
नॉन एस टी एलिवेशन एम आई और एस टी सेगमेंट एलिवेशन एम आई इन एस टी सेगमेंट एलिवेशन एम आई द कॉर्नरीज गेट टोटली अक्लूडेड हंड्रेड परसेंट अक्लूडेड देर इज नो डिस्टल ब्लड फ्लो टू दैट ब्लैक रपचर सेगमेंट वाइल इन अनस्टेबल एंजाइना और नॉन एस टी एलिवेशन एम आई देर इज स्टिल सम ब्लड फ्लो डिस्टल टू द ब्लैक रपचर so what are the clinical features for acute mi or acs the main clinical feature is chest pain you should have a very crisp command on your history taking while this is the only tool which can diagnose your patient ecg will just confirm your diagnosis so chest pain is the main clinical features of acute uh, acs other clinical features are diaphoresis dyspnea palpitation or light headedness you should have a very clear concepts of uh, history taking that some of the people that is di diabetes diabetic patients or elderly patients diabetic with neuropathies may doesn't show with the chest pain so you have to take your history accordingly you should have command on your history taking these are the uh, some points of uh, history taking that is uh, the pain of acute mi is usually most of the time is sudden onset substernal crushing the nature of the pain is tightness like someone has tightened your chest or uh, it's very severe in acute mi patients when there is total occlusion it is not relieved by nitro nitroglycerin sublingually or iv uh, and the chest radiates to your jaw your left arm and you may have these other symptoms which has been described lower in the segment the usual dermatomal distribution of the chest pain is it is substernal center in the center of the chest and it radiates to neck and to medial aspects of your left arm while in less that any pain it is being said uh, it has been confirmed that any pain from the ear lobe till the umbilicus it could be acs it could be chest pain so never take any pain in the chest uh, as an easy you should work out for acs and it may be one of the lethal cause of the chest pain so examination usually unremarkable but in certain cases so you may have diaphoresis patient may be pale with cool is cool is skin they may be tachycardic tachypneic and if they may be in shock and in cases of complication they may have added sounds other than s1 and s2 and if they are in failure they may have crept on lung examination this is the uh, some overview of the ecg how it gets changes uh, as chest pain will wait so this is the normal ecg uh, which has shown that the st segment st segment is starts from the end of the qrs complex till the beginning of the uh, t wave usually it is in isoelectric line not positive not negative it is a straight line horizontal line so when the chest pain occurs or ischemia starts is in minutes the first the t waves gets enlarged or it is called hyperacute waves or t wave or peak t waves then in hours it develops starts st segments elevation so this the horizontal segments gets starts to elevate from the baseline and in days the t wave t waves tries to get settles and q waves starts forming and in days the t waves get inverted and a q waves formed and in weeks or months 
Q waves form and T waves get upright. This is the evolution of ECG or ECG waves in uh, acute MR. So this is the normal ECG as I previously described that the V are more uh, we have more uh, have to note this segment of the ACG that is ST segment. It is horizontal line from the end of the QR segment till the beginning of the T wave. You can see all there, it is horizontal segment. It doesn't uh, deviate from the horizontal line. So this is the normal ECG of a person with rate of about 75, or 65 beats per minute. This is the ECG. You can see that there are ST depressions in precordial leads. You can see that this is the horizontal line and there are depressions in precordial leads. As well as in some lateral leads, you can see ST depressions. So this is non stscs or you can see it could be uh, unstable angina or it could be non st elevation mi depending on our blood test if blood test shows troponin raised then it is non st elevation mi if troponin doesn't raise this is unstable angina so this is the another ecg which shows that there are st elevations in lead 1 avf uh, so you can see this is lead one, this is lead AVL. So it means that it is lateral wall MI. There are reciprocal changes to it. This is ST de depressions in lead two, three, and AVF. So this is lateral wall MI, acute lateral wall MI. There is another ECG which shows ST elevation lead, lead two, three, V4, V5, and V6. So this is uh, anterior wall MI, acute anterior wall MI. There's another ECG which shows ST elevation in lead 2, 3, AVF, and reciprocal changes in 1 and AVL, that is ST depressions. So this is acute inferior wall MI. Now, after taking your history, uh, doing examinations, uh, and getting your ECG done. If ECG shows ST elevation, you don't need anything else. You just have to focus on your treatment and try to get uh, revascularize the patient as soon as possible. So you don't need anything else. While if doesn't if it doesn't shows uh, ST elevation, it shows ST depressions or T wave inversions, other signs of ischemia besides ST elevation. So you need your labs done. Although you have to start your treatment, but you uh, it is not a very uh, devastating emergency. You need to have your labs that is troponin to confirm your diagnosis, either it is non-ST elevation MI or unstable angina. If the troponins get raised, so it, it is unstable, uh, not raised, it is unstable angina. If it engaged rates, uh, the cardiac biomarkers raised, it is non-ST elevation MI. And these are the biomarkers that is troponin, myoglobin, and CKMB. Uh, these are the troponin which is being used, but the most commonly used and most specific are the troponins. Uh, all over the world, troponins being used for uh, biomarkers. There are importance of CKMB and myoglobin, but troponins are being used more. This is the graph which shows that why troponins are more important than CKMB and other uh, biomarkers. You can see that on horizontal scale, you can see this, while on uh, vertical scale, you can see the level of the cardiac biomarkers. As ischemia occurs, the CKMB gets raised within hours, and within a day, the CKMB gets to your normal limits. If the patient comes with chest pain and ECG changes after two or three days, 
if you do CKMB, it won't help you because that level has been raised and now it's to the normal level. So you won't be able to, or you will misdiagnose the patient. But in troponins, the level gets raised within hours of ischemia and it remains there for certain days. So you can diagnose anywhere uh, between a week or more than it stays more than a week and the levels gets much higher than the CKMB level. So detection is easy as well. That's why troponin is preferred for MI, for ischemia. Now uh, let's uh, have uh, start our management. How do we manage ST elevation MI? This is uh, all the treatments I have taken is from the guidelines that has been published in 2013. Uh, by AHA and ACC, American College of Cardiology and AHA. Treatment for ST elevation MI. The treatment is being divided into general measures, pharmacological treatment and reperfusion therapy. Uh, general measures are bed rest, uh, telemetry monitoring and oxygen therapy uh, if saturation is uh, low, that is less than or equal to 90%. Other treatments you should, in general measures, I have missed that you should have your IV line and if patient is in failure, you should have uh, folly catheterization to devolume the, dry the patient. Pharmacological treatment, you need antiplatelet agents, that is aspirin or P2Y12 inhibitors, uh, clopidogrel, prasugrel, ticagrelor and cacagrelor. Previously, when this uh, group clopidogrel was very um, commonly used, but now ticagrelor is being taken uh, the place of clopidogrel because it is showing more efficient than clopidogrel. Beta blockers, beta blockers, high intensity statin uh, recommended. Morphine, if the patient is having chest pain, you can give morphine and anticoagulate the patient with unfractionated heparin or low molecular weight heparin. These all treatments are class one indication. You have to give all these medications in emergency uh, after ruling out any contraindication for these medications. After giving your emergency uh, pharmacological treatment, your aim should be uh, to reperfuse the patient as soon as possible because in cardiology, it is said that minute is muscle. Minutes counts in cardiology. The sooner you get uh, revascularize the patient, uh, the lesser will be the mortality and the uh, morbidity. The, as much as you take time, the myocardium gets necrosed. So once it gets necrosed, there is no point of reperfusion because you cannot uh, real life or the dead area, the necrosed area. So what are the strategy for, uh, per, for re reperfusion? We have basically two strategies. That is percutaneous coronary intervention, PCI. In the case of, of acute MI, it is called primary percutaneous coronary interventions. And the other is thrombolytics. We can, the clot or the thrombus that is being formed and totally occluded the cor coronaries, we can give thrombolyt thrombolytics to uh, thrombolyze uh, that thrombus and establish the blood flow. These are the thrombolytics that is uh, streptokinase, TPA, retiblase, nectiplase. These are being used for cases of acute MI. In our setup, we uh, use a streptokinase due to financial, financial reasons. This is the uh, video uh, that is being showed that this is how we do the coronary intervention. The, we do puncture in femoral or right radial area and then get access to the coronaries. This is the coronary. After getting access, then we uh, 
go across the lesion by coronary wire, which is very thin wire. And then we inserted our gadgets that is a stents mounted on balloon. Uh, then once it crossed the lesion, then we inflate the balloon and uh, the stent gets uh, inflated and gets stuck there, uh, reduces the stenosis. And then we deflate the balloon and take out uh, our gadgets. So uh, the blood flow, the stenosis area gets treated and the blood flow gets established. Now uh, let's have uh, our view of our uh, treatment of patients with non-ST elevation MI, that is unstable angina or uh, non-ST elevation MI. This is also from the guidelines, uh, which is being published in 2014 by ACC and AHA, recommended treatment for non-ST elevation MI patients. Um, same pattern, that is general measures, pharmacological treatment, and in this, you don't need rapid or very emergent revascularization, but you have to risk stratify the patient which patient should be taken uh, to cath lab as early as possible and which patient should be kept on medical treatment and what when this acute pain or acute issue get resolved then we do the cath of this patient in general measures uh, are same that is bed rest telemetry monitoring oxygen therapy iv line maintaining iv line and police catheterization and uh, Treatments are same. Besides, in this, you give nitroglycerin to the patient. Nitroglycerin relieves the pain of the patient. In non-ST elevation angina, non-ST elevation MI or unstable angina. Because I described in the previous slides that there is some flow in uh, there remains some flow in uh, coronary is distal to the disease segment because the RT doesn't get 100% or total occlusion. So whenever you give nitroglycerin as a vasodilator, it dilates the coronaries and the obstruction gets lesser and the pain and the blood flow gets improved with nitroglycerin. But in cases of acute MI, as the RT is total, totally occluded, so uh, this nitroglycerin doesn't help you out. So otherwise, the treatments are same. Antiplatelets, beta blockers, high intensity statin, morphine for painkiller, and you can use other opioids as well, and anticoagulation. After giving this uh, pharmacological treatment, what you need is a risk stratification. There are various uh, app on your mobile phone or there are various uh, scores for risk stratification, but the most commonly used is TIMI risk score. It has seven parameters, that is age, risk factors for coronary artery disease, aspirin use for the last seven days, previously known coronary artery disease, or having more episodes of angina for more than more than one episodes of angina in less than 24 hours. And ST segment, there are ST segment deviation in ACG or elevated biomarkers. These seven risk, seven parameters, if they have, if they have it, score one. If they doesn't have, score zero. So the, the maximum score is seven and the minimum score is zero. So uh, based on this parameters, which contains your history and your labs and ECG. So this will help you out to stratify your patient. Either your patient is high risk, intermediate risk or uh, low risk. If uh, based on this risk scoring, then we will individualize the patient, which patient should be taking to cath lab early 
and which which patient shouldn't be ta sh uh, shouldn't be taken to the cath lab and do other tests before taking him to the cath lab so how we uh, catheterize the patient with unstable angina or non st elevation mi if the patient having score of 0 to 2 then uh, it means the patient is uh, having low risk patients so before taking him to the cath lab uh, is test testing should be done as angiography is a aggressive test so uh, do stress testing that is imaging either ETT, stress echo or uh, MPI depending on availability. If the patient has a score of three to four, it is called intermediate score. This patient should be taken to the cath lab as early as possible. I mean within 24 hours or within 72 hours. And if the patient has very high score, more than five, five or more than five, this patient, these patient also should be taken to the cath lab. Doesn't need any other test for catheterization. This, these patients should be taken to the cath lab as early as possible. So uh, describing the treatments for acute MI, non-ST elevation MI and ST elevation MI. Um, Let's go over with the complications of acute MI. We have these five different categories of complication in acute MI. It can be either uh, mechanical, electrical, arrhythmic, or inflammatory, ischemic, or uh, embolic. In mechanical complications uh, are cardiogenic shock, MR, the rupture of the free wall, VSR, and electrical car uh, complication. It could be bradyarrhythmia, tachyarrhythmia, blocks. While in inflammatory, you have uh, pericarditis, ischemic complication that post MI with inflammation there is post MI uh, post infarction angina while embol embolic complication you have a mural thrombus or systemic embolism it can lead to stroke or ischemia of your peripheries these all treated accordingly this is another separate topic uh, to deal with complications of acute MI so if you have any questions, I end here. If you have any questions, kindly write in your chat. I will uh, answer your questions. Hello. You are hearing me. You can write your questions. If you want to me go over any slides or if you want to ask anything, you can write me. Or I shared my email address. If any one of you have any queries regarding cardiology, you can visit uh, your cardiology department. I am available there.
हेलो हेलो जी सर जी एंड कर दो हाँ हाँ एंड कर दें आ, क्या हुआ कहाँ खत्म हो गई है मुझे तो पता ही नहीं चला आपने क्वेश्चन आंसर कर दिए सर क्वेश्चन आंसर आप सुन रहे थे नहीं जी जी मैं सुन रहा था तो का, मुझे तो नहीं पता कहाँ तक वो था नहीं आपकी आवाज कहीं डिस्टर्ब थोड़ी है आपने क्लास पूरी की है हाँ कह रहा हूँ क्लास डिस्टर्ब आपकी क्लास डिस्टर्ब नहीं हुई आपने क्लास पूरी की है अच्छा क्वेश्चन आंसर सेशन तक हो गया था तो आप एक दफा चैट बॉक्स खोल के देखें तो 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 चैट चैट अगर मिस हो गई है तो 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 फिर आप तो रिप्लाई तो 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 कर बॉक्स नीचे नीचे देखें ऑप्शन आ रहा होगा मोर मोर में क्लिक करके कुछ नहीं है वैसे किसी ने कुछ पूछा ही नहीं है कुछ नहीं पूछा आपकी क्वेश्चन आंसर करवा रहा हूँ एक मिनट भी है करवा लें करवा लें यार एक ही मिनट मुड़ तो जाए हेलो 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 यस 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 अच्छा आवाज आ रही है हार यू हेरिंग मी हेलो सर आपके पास चैट बॉक्स शो नहीं हो रहा अच्छा अब हो रहा है 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 ना इसमें इसमें जो भी आप रिप्लाई कर दें ये लोग के पास शायद माइक अवेलेबल नहीं है अच्छा चले अच्छा क्वेश्चन बीइंग आस व्हाई थ्रोम्बोलाइटिक्स और थ्रोम्बोलाइसिस इज कॉन्ट्राइंडिकेटेड इन एस अनस्टेबल एंजाइना और नॉन एस्टी एलिवेशन है माइ बिकॉज यू नीड अ ग्रेडियंट ऑफ थ्रोम्बोलिटिक्स बिफोर ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन देर फोर यू कैन नॉट मेक अ ग्रेडियंट uh not having the complete occlusion so if you give thrombolytex to to such patient that increases the chances of bleeding it is being uh observed that in cases of unstable angina and non st elevation that the chances of bleeding will get very high by using uh angina uh, by using thrombolytex that is why uh thrombolytex is not indicated or contraindicated in cases of unstable angina or non st elevation am i uh where we can do this topic from or ecg was confusing so uh, look ecg uh, interpreting ecg is a totally different and totally separate topic uh, we cannot discuss uh, in a single actually these are three or four different topics which is being covered in less than 40 minutes so uh, unstable angina is separate topic mi is separate topic complications are separate so i i just concluded all uh, these four topics uh, in a single presentation and ecg is a very different thing so you need proper classes for your ecg interpretation starting from uh, rate rhythm stt changes blocks and everything then you will get your uh, ecg so how to differentiate non st elevation am i uh, you cannot you cannot uh, differentiate unstable angina from non st elevation am i clinically that is why uh, these two topics are uh, yes hello hello sun rahe nahi aap se nahi kar raha class mein aap acha ji that is why these two topics Uh, these two topics are compiled in the same guidelines that it unstable angina or non st elevation the treatment is same so only with troponin if the troponin is raised it is non st elevation am i if the troponin is uh, not raised it is unstable angina so clinically it uh, it is not possible to uh, differentiate between these two uh, go over your textbook that is uh, either you are following current or you are following uh, davidson i will recommend you to to go over uh, davidson can we use uh, thrombolytex with pci yet uh, yes there are various uh, strategies for uh, acute mi uh, we can use uh, thrombolytex with pci 
do uh, thrombolyze the patient and do the PCI after three to four hours or within three to uh, 24 hours or 12 hours. Yes, these both can be, it, it is called facilitated PCI. Uh, there are different stages, primary PCI in which you take the patient immediately to the cath lab. There is rescue PCI, if the thrombolytics get failed, you do pre-CI. There is facilitate, there is another strategy which is called facilitated PCI. You give the thrombolytics and after three to four hours, you PCI the patient. Uh, there. So uh, your answer is yes. Nitroglycerin is a painkiller, so why it is fatal in right heart failure? Well, in right heart failure, you are uh, you need volume to maintain the circulation. The nitroglycerin is not a painkiller. Nitroglycerin is a vasodilator, especially venodilator. So when you give in right heart failure nitroglycerin what it causes it venodilate and venodilate what it causes the venous system all the bloods gets pulled into the venous system the right heart the right heart doesn't gets the venous return so uh, ultimately the left heart doesn't get if the right heart pumps it goes to the lung and then to the uh, left heart so the, the, the left heart doesn't get the blood so ultimately lead uh, it, it is very catastrophic condition and patient may die with it. Um, is angioplasty and PCI is the same? Yes, 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 yes. These both are the same. Uh, is Timmy score is for no? Uh, we can risk we can risk stratify uh, acute uh, ST elevation MI as well. That is which patient is high risk, which patient is low risk. Timmy scoring. Uh, but the TIMI scoring for uh, ST elevation MI is a separate, uh, which uh, includes other entities. Uh, but more important, uh, TIMI scoring is for non-STEMI, which uh, I discussed with you. You should learn that and forget about the ST elevation MI in uh, your level. If uh, still anyone has any questions or query, uh, you can mail me as well. Uh, my email address, uh, I will share with you people my email address. If you have any questions, you can mail me as well. And if you need your uh, this presentations of mine, uh, you can mail me or WhatsApp me. I will send to you people. Thank you, sir. Ah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Sir, sir, Dr. Amran, wait, get in the class and start it. Hello? Class and get in. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, thank okay, you so much. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Slow on the